Kalano, Aki, sweet potato, yam, banana, and tomato, cabbage, spinach, avocado, chow chow, butter, bean, and cocoa, courgette, millet, plantain, rice and peas and pumpkin, mango, dates and guava, chickpeas and cassava. The Truth About was a documentary series shown on BBC for two years ago. I wanted to make a reply as soon as I saw the documentary. I saw it a little bit late, but about that time it was a little too late because it was already taken off the air. And I tried to get to BBC. I wanted to see if they would allow me to get a copy to make critical comments on. But after several attempts they refused. But recently, somehow, I was able to get a copy. Now I would take for me the featured episode Meat that follows Chris Mavin on his quest to figure out how much meat is really healthy, what it does and what are the dangers. So how worried should we be? Some think we shouldn't eat meat at all, but it seems most of us in the UK still love it. 98% of us are meat eaters. This is the average amount of meat we eat each year in this country, around 54 kilos. And it's this breakdown, more processed meat than anything else, a fair pile of red meat, and an increasing quantity of chicken. I love it all. Even uncooked like this, you can see all the potential dishes you can make. And I want to carry on eating meat, but I'm determined to get to the bottom of what it is about it that's bad, what's good, how much should I be eating, and is there any of this that I should avoid? I've teamed up with top scientists to put meat under the microscope and examine it as never before. In the beginning, it actually looks like this is professionally done. I'm Chris Bavin. I'm a greengrocer by trade and a carnivore by nature. First fail there. It sounds a little autistic, but I would say that saying that you're carnivore by nature actually applies that you are physiologically adapted to consume uh, only meat. Now, there is a dispute if humans are herbivores or omnivores, but nobody suggests that we are carnivores. The first thing I want to know is, what are the benefits to eating meat? How much good does it do us? We've taken over a sushi bar to set up a guessing game. What I want you to do is to pick the dishes you think match the nutrients found in this steak. Sue, how do they do? Yep, you've got three sources of protein there, so the nuts have got protein in the soy mince has got protein in, and the eggs. I'm curious, which food item does not contain proteins? Hmm... No, all foods have protein. Like, all foods except gelatin has a complete amino acid profile. But you need seven and a half eggs to get the same amount of protein that's in there. A point was made about eggs, although people continue saying, Oh, but uh, eggs contain all the nutrients we need, except C vitamins. Which is true, but the amount is actually very poor. In fact, to match all the nutrients present in this state, you'd have to gather quite a buffet. And in these quantities. Around a kilo of prawns to get all the zinc, good for energy and growth. Some Brazil nuts to match the selenium for a healthy immune system. Two to three bananas to get the potassium an egg to match the vitamin D, and to get the iron you need for red blood cells, you would have to eat a whole bag's worth of spinach. And welcome to the first bias. Okay, they basically cherry-picked food items to make steak look fantastic. Okay, I'm not going to go through every single nutrient, but I can go through iron and proteins. If you look at the iron in lentils, it's actually a percent higher than in steak. If you look at kidney beans, they get the exact same amount of proteins. If you look at soy, it's both higher in protein and iron. Just to name a few. And I thought you'd need a few of the dishes, but I didn't think you'd need that array, and in some cases quantities, to get the nutrients that you find in a steak. Meat's very nutrient dense, so it can be quite hard to replace the nutrients unless you think quite carefully about how you're going to do it. And it's not as simple as just cutting the meat out and having the potatoes and the vegetables. You actually think, what am I going to have as the centre of my meal instead? Ha 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 It's poor in magnesium, it gets no C vitamins, no carbohydrates, no fibre, no vitamin A, and it's low in unsaturated fats. Yeah, nutrient powerhouse, right? Is there one thing that's quite difficult to replace? 
Well, I'd say that the iron in meat is particularly difficult because it's a very well-absorbed source of iron. And in the UK, about 20% of women have got low intakes of iron. So from that point of view, red meat's quite useful. Are you talking about heme iron? Wow. Heme iron's actually the best absorbed iron, though is it worth it? Heme iron is a huge cause of cancer, it's a huge cause of diabetes, and this meta-analysis here shows the link between heme iron and heart disease. Okay, so do you think that you still need heme iron to get like proper amount of iron? Well, vegans don't have a higher rate of iron deficiency. After reviewing more than 800 studies, the World Health Organization has declared that processed meat is a definite cause of bowel cancer. Around 16,000 people die of bowel cancer in the UK each year. When I saw these headlines, it really made me think twice, and I'm not the only one. What I want to know is how scared should we actually be of processed meat, and should we be considering ditching it altogether? Well, yeah. There has been a study done that proves without a shadow of a doubt that processed meat causes cancer. But it's not the only methyl analysis been done. Like, the way that dogs figure out that a person has cancer is because of sulfur. And this is due to high intakes of sulfur-containing amino acids. And I'm already talking about the heme iron. Not only that, but typically hormones, which is more common in dairy, also causes cancer because it enhances growth. And what does grow in human adults? It's cancer. One of the things I want to find out is what makes this lovely looking pig into processed meat? Because it's not processed in this format, is it? No, this is very much in its rawest form. Um, what makes it processed is when it's had something added to it, be it flavor, salt, sugar, preservative. Processed meat is basically meat that has been modified in some way to make it last longer or change its taste. We need to go and grab our salt, sugar and nitrite. We're processing this bacon by curing it, adding a mixture of preservatives to extend its shelf life. The nitrite, why do we use that? For safety reasons, it's the only known preventative of uh, the spores of Clostridium botulinum, which can be toxic to human beings. The preservative sodium nitrite is an effective way to kill the bacteria that can lead to botulism, a deadly form of food poisoning but it's also the ingredient at the center of the health warnings about processed meats. Oh, but it's only processed meats. I eat fresh meat so I don't get cancer. Do you want to end up with botulism? That noise and that smell. I mean, that's fantastic, isn't it? Going. You can see why uh, vegetarians fail when it comes to yeah, bacon. Yeah. <laughs> bacon, though. No, seriously, there are so many substitutes for bacon and even kombu can be made in the correct way to create a bacon substitute that tastes exactly the same. Now many must be thinking that, oh there must be something that can remove nitrates. And yes there are, but guess what it is. Well the problem is that nitrites have a role in our food. They are there to preserve, they are there to make sure that the food is safe to eat. The problem is that nitrite doesn't only protect us from spoilage in meat, but it also increases the risk for cancer. Okay, so it is quite ironic then, isn't it, that they're in our food to protect us from the yes. food going off and yes. the bacteria yes. that may occur in, in food naturally, but yet they're harmful to us as well. Exactly. They can react with the stomach acid and all the things you find in meat to form compounds which are cancer-causing. Along with his colleague, Dr. Cheng, Gunter is trialing a formula which can combat the negative effects of the nitrite. So this is the secret ingredient. This is this extract which allows us to reduce the amount of nitrite in them, which prevents the formation of the cancer-causing compounds. Right, okay, so this is very important then. This is very important and this is really the result of several years of research. Wow. The main part in there is, is a green tea extract, but there are other extracts of plant extracts in there. Quite funny that the thing you must add to make meat healthy is a plant. Gunter's secret mixture means he can cut the amount of nitrate he uses in his sausages by half. And in studies, this has also had a dramatic effect on the levels of cancer-causing compound in the gut. So either you could kill an innocent pig, you could um, continue on, add nitrite, then add some green tea extract, and then consume it and still have a 50% of the nitrite left, or you could just eat a meat substitute that does not have any nitrite 
in it. So what about the cancer risks of unprocessed meat? No processing, so no nitrite. Does that mean we're safe to tuck into fresh red meat? The bad news is, although the WHO report doesn't put it in the same category as processed meat, it still believes red meat is probably cancer causing. And how you cook it could be part of the problem and part of the solution. Probably cancer causing. If you knew the amount of studies that shows the link between animal products and cancer, there would be no doubt. You don't need to do year longs of meta-analysis, though it has been done, to know that meat causes cancer because of the array of studies suggesting it. But the only thing they were interested in was to look at the PAHs in the meat that also does cause cancer, but it's not really the only thing that causes cancer in meat. But they put forward that you do have to cook it because of bacteria. So the searing of the steak kills the bacteria and the inside is absolutely fine. But with the burger, what's happened is it's been minced together prior to cooking. So the bacteria could be mixed throughout the whole burger. So the advice is when you're cooking a burger at home on the barbecue or whatever, make sure you cook it really thoroughly. And yes, you could do that or you could just eat something else. The UK government currently recommends we eat no more than 70 grams a day of either processed meat or fresh red meat, like beef, lamb and pork. This is based on giving us the maximum nutritional benefit while limiting the risk of bowel cancer. I don't know what they mean about limiting the risk by that eating some meat would give you the amount of nutrients you need. The British Dietetics Association has made a peer-reviewed paper that says that a well-planned vegan diet is suitable for all stages of life, even athletes. Same for the American Dietetics Association and even the health organization in Norway has done the same thing. On this plate, I have 159 grams of processed meat. That's more than double my 70 gram daily allowance. And I'm only just out of bed. 70 grams a day. It sounds like nothing because it is absolutely nothing. What you could actually do is to go over to meat substitutes. Just look at what I did yesterday. So now we got 273 grams of meat um, substitutes, so a burger, a sausage, here I got a vegan meatloaf and a vegan sausage bacon. Other than that I got salad, I got deep fried onion, uh, there is uh, pineapples in here, uh, ketchup, and I also have tomato beans together with uh, some red lentils. And I will, I will eat this. Now I just ate everything. Now this was all exaggerated, I've eaten 213 grams of meat substitutes. Though keep in mind that this was only 1.4 milligrams of saturated fats, which is way below the British recommendations. So if you do want meat, what is the most logical thing to do? To consume a minuscule amount of meat or to have as many meat substitutes as you like. Yeah, it's unhealthy to eat that much like processed foods, but it's still not as bad as eating plain meat. Well, in this documentary, they also made this mind-blowing study. 40 volunteers have signed up to a three-month project to see whether cutting down on meat reduces their risk of heart disease. For the study, they are reducing their red and processed meat intake by half. It's meant some tough choices about what to do without. Why only half? So what is it about eating meat that could cause heart disease? There's a variety of uh, suggestions around. Uh, almost certainly the major one is, is the amount of fat in it and the type of fat which is associated with it, particularly with red meat. It's relatively rich in saturated fat, which we know potentially can put the level of cholesterol up in your blood, and that's probably the major factor. A high saturated fat diet increases your cholesterol, and having a high cholesterol increases your risk of heart disease. Yes, saturated fats does actually increase your cholesterol, but more significantly, dietary cholesterol increase serum cholesterol way more than saturated fats do. Like, you could feed vegans with high amounts of saturated fats, and their serum cholesterol does not increase that much. 
And then the polyunsaturated fat is actually trying to, trying to reverse down, the yeah. effect of that. But unfortunately, this is probably twice as potent at increasing your cholesterol as that one is at decreasing it. So you have to eat twice as much of that to, to, to counteract it. The volunteers are having blood tests taken throughout the experiment to measure any changes in cholesterol levels. Now, the only cause of atherosclerosis is actually the consumption of dietary cholesterol. Now, this meta-analysis here actually tells us that having a serum cholesterol score of 75 mg per deciliter is where atherosclerosis cannot form. And vegans are the only ones that has low enough cholesterol scores. And because animal products do contain dietary cholesterol, the proper way to do a study like this is basically to put the people on a vegan diet and give them supplements that contains the half amount of saturated fat that they were consuming while eating animal products. But no, they were going to give them foods that contains a lot of cholesterol. When meat is broken down by digestion, certain types of bacteria in our gut produce the harmful substance. It's known as TMAO. It's believed to contribute to the hardening of the arteries. With the professor's heart patients, higher levels have been found in the most acute cases. For those people that have heart disease, I would recommend that we try to lower their levels. Reduce red meat intake would be a logical choice. The professor has found that the gut bacteria of vegans don't produce TMAO. It's only found in meat eaters. Note that in this entire documentary about meat, this is the only time he mentions vegans. Well, have we conducted a study showing what happens to vegetarians? Wouldn't the logical thing be to go vegan when it shows that vegans does not have this bacteria? Well, Chris asked an expert about chicken. Is it still the meat that we should be eating? Absolutely. I mean, chicken in general, chicken breast, chicken thigh, are low in fat and low in saturated fat. So it's a lean meat to have. Also another false analogy, like all meats cause high mortality. Chicken is in that category. Chicken is also one of the food items that contains the most amount of estrogen, which it should not be consuming. Chicken is also the biggest source of dietary sodium, which is also should keep a little bit low. I think that would be a good idea. I mean, they even pump chickens full of salt water before selling it to you. Yeah, chicken is a very lean choice, isn't it? It also contains cholesterol, so no, chicken is not a health food. Many avoid it because of concerns around animal welfare and the big moral difficulty of killing an animal to eat it. Now, we are a nation of animal lovers, but yet we're also a nation of meat eaters. It's quite a conflict. Today is the day I've been slightly dreading. I'm going to come face to face with the slaughter process. My wife's a vegetarian and she was horrified when I told her I was coming to an abattoir. I think she's secretly hoping this might convert me to a vegetarian. And you know what? It could well do. Yeah, Chris, for rational people, people who are not ethically retards, they would understand that your money is contributing to the suffering and death of innocent beings. At this point, it's very important because here, the official veterinarian who's on site checks every animal to make sure that they're fit and healthy for slaughter. And also, it gives the animals the opportunity to rest and settle back down because what we don't want is any stressful situation for the animal because that has a negative effect on the meat quality. Oh yeah, animal welfare is so important because we don't want the cortisone to make the meat taste bad. <laughs> they are about to go through. I'm a bit apprehensive about seeing this. Now I'm going to go see the final stages. I'll see you on the other side. I don't really know how I feel about that. I mean, it was very quick. Uh, the, 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 hold on for a second. They did not show the actual slaughter. Now, for the people that are consuming animal products, don't you think that they have a right to know where the meat comes from? Just, am I the only one here that think it's a crime not to tell the people that are consuming the meat how they're killed, show them how it's done, so that they may make up their minds? 
it seems humane, you know, it's almost done in an instant, but yeah, actually seeing it happen is, is quite strange, I must admit, I've, I've got mixed emotions about it. The definition of humane is having or showing compassion and benevolence. Killing somebody is not compassion and benevolence. I'm kind of glad I've been here today. It hasn't quite turned me vegetarian, but I will certainly appreciate and value meat more now. So Chris, now after seeing killing of an animal, now you value murder more? Is that what you're saying? This is like saying, I just saw the, the film Schindler's List. So now I value the Holocaust more? Is that, what? An overlooked part of each animal, which has fallen out of favour in this country, is the offal. Surprisingly, offal can be one of the most nutritious parts of the animal. Yeah, there was a long part of this documentary talking about offals. We're talking organs meat here. Okay, so is there anything wrong with organ meats? Hmm, could it be that the livers and the kidneys have all the antibiotics washed through it? Yeah, that's where all the medicaments end up. But not only that, they got even toxic amount of vitamin A. Dangerous amounts of vitamin A can cause damage to livers. It's also associated with osteoporosis and hip fracture. Yeah, this is this is something you really do want to con consume. Yeah, awful, yeah. Good point making, yeah. So let's look at the results from the groundbreaking study they were making. So one of our hypotheses was that the consumption of large amounts of, uh, of, of red meat was associated with a consumption of lots of saturated fat. And uh, so going from your regular intake, which is shown on that table, to about half the amount of red meat you're eating, we reckon that you've reduced your saturated intake on a weekly basis by about that much every week. Per week? Per week. So 12 lots of that over the whole of the study. 12 times that amount. That's, um, I mean, that's shocking, isn't it? It's a lot. That's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, so what you're saying is that if you consume less, saturated fats, you have consumed less saturated fats. Wow! Why did you have them consume less dietary cholesterol? Do you know, there's something called mathematics there? Just, um, just look it up. So in terms of your good cholesterol, the first thing I can tell you is that that actually, for the whole group, did not change significantly over the 12-week period. However, with the bad cholesterol, the LDL cholesterol, the cholesterol that increases your risk, we saw an overall drop. And we saw a drop in the group of a, as a whole of about 10% in your bad cholesterol. Wow, how amazing. Uh, no, this is, this is obvious. You've consumed less saturated fat indeed, but more so, they've halved their amount of cholesterol. So yes, their cholesterol score will logically drop, but the proper way to check cholesterol scores is to have a clean-out process where you consume no animal protein and then add it later to see the actual changes. It perhaps will remind me every now and then that, that you know, if I'm tucking into too many steaks in a week, that perhaps I should have the fish instead off the menu rather than the red meat. Rather the fish. Rather the fish. Fish also contains of cholesterol. Yes, it is a little bit lower in saturated fats. It still has sulfur containing amino acids. And it also contains mercury and PCB plastics. Fish are toxic. I've learned some stark facts about the health risks associated with eating meat. There's no getting away from it. But I come away from it feeling reassured. You can reduce the negatives pretty easily and still enjoy meat. And with a few changes to your habits, you can still make meat a healthy choice. No, Chris, it's not a healthy choice. That is not. Like, I can agree, if you reduce your amount of meat, uh, eggs and dairy. Yeah, you can live healthy on an omnivorous diet. I agree. That it's not that the animal products is increasing your health. But what is the truth here? If you consume any amount of animal protein during your life, you will get dementia within your 70s or 80s, unless if you die prior to it. And also keep in mind that just being a semi-vegetarian puts you at risk of heart disease. So in conclusion, either this documentary was done without not enough knowledge, or it was flawed by design. Because honestly, there is nothing called healthy amounts of animal products.
that that has been like monster belief proven wrong long ago okay see you guys next time